Hi, my name is Zach Wallace. I'm a rheumatologist and a researcher here at Mass General. And today I'm going to speak with you about COVID-19. Since the beginning of the pandemic, there have been understandable concerns among rheumatology patients and their providers regarding the risks of COVID-19 for our patients. And by risks, I mean both the risks of getting COVID-19 and then the risks of having severe outcomes like needing to be hospitalized um, or becoming very sick uh, if you have COVID-19. Thankfully, you know, we're now two years into this pandemic and we've learned a tremendous amount about COVID-19 in the general population, but also specifically in patients like yourselves who are living with rheumatic conditions. For the purposes of our talk today, or for this short session, I'm gonna focus on rheumatic conditions that are treated with immunosuppression or immunomodulators. So I'm gonna focus on diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, vasculitis, conditions of that nature. For those of you who are living with osteoarthritis, fibromyalgia, gout, and other medicines, I suggest you speak with your provider or consult other sources for more information about COVID-19, because this information is going to be really specific to that other group of patients. So I think one of the most important and common questions that I get asked by patients with rheumatic disease regarding COVID-19 is what their risk is, and is it different from someone without a rheumatic disease? There have been a number of studies that have sought to answer this question, and they've yielded some conflicting information. But I think that's because, as you probably know, there are many different types of rheumatic diseases, and the risk of COVID-19 is going to vary depending on a number of factors. So first off, many of the risk factors for severe COVID-19 or for getting COVID-19 in the first place have to do with things that are unrelated to your rheumatic disease. So things like your age, your sex, whether you've smoked in the past, and other medical problems that you might have. There are some factors related to your rheumatic disease that will impact your risk of COVID-19. And so those include some of the medicines that we use to treat rheumatic disease. Particularly, those medicines that are very strong immunosuppressants, things like rituximab or cyclophosphamide, do seem to put patients at higher risk for COVID-19. Patients on other medications don't seem to be at particularly high risk. There are a number of other problems that patients with rheumatic diseases can develop, and these can affect their kidneys, their lung, their heart. Having those other medical problems can contribute to having a higher risk of COVID-19. For those of you who don't use the medications that I mentioned and don't have some of the other medical problems that I listed, your risk is very similar to other people of similar age and sex in terms of COVID-19. Another common question that we get asked is how patients can reduce their risk of COVID-19. First and foremost, we are so lucky to, to have very safe and effective vaccines available. And so I recommend that everyone speak with their provider about getting a COVID-19 vaccine. It's important to remember that many of the patients who are living with rheumatic diseases fall into a special category where you do require an extra dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, and it's important to discuss that with your provider. Second, it's important to remember that while these vaccines are very effective, some of the medicines that we use to treat rheumatic disease can reduce that efficacy. And so as a result, I tend to tell my patients to continue to be cautious. And there are several ways that you could be cautious. When you're out in public, it's great to wear a well-fitting mask. It's good to try and avoid really crowded indoor spaces that may be poorly ventilated. It's great if you could encourage your family members and friends who you spend a lot of time with to also get vaccinated. And it's also important to remember that if you aren't feeling well, you should go ahead and let your provider know and get tested because there are medicines that we can use early on to help reduce the risk of you developing more severe disease. And a third way that you can try and reduce your risk of COVID-19 is for those patients who are on certain medications like rituximab especially, there is now a treatment available as what's called pre-exposure prophylaxis, meaning it's a medicine that you take before you're exposed to COVID-19 to reduce the risk of developing COVID-19 if you are exposed. You should discuss this option with your provider because the supply is limited, but we're expecting it to become more available in the near future. Finally, another common question that we get asked is what to do with immunosuppression and immunosuppressive medications during the pandemic. 
especially as we go through different surges over time. There's no one size fits all answer to this question. It's really an important discussion that you need to have with your provider. But in general, as you're aware, these medicines are really important for controlling your disease and protecting damage from your joints or other organs. There are, however, some situations in which we may adjust doses or frequency of medication, and you should discuss that with your provider before making any changes to your treatment. So thanks very much for letting me speak with you today about COVID-19. You should definitely discuss these topics with your provider at your next visit, and I hope you all stay safe. Thank you.